Hey team, I hope you're tickety boo. Welcome to my new yarn room. Where do we start? Let's start at the beginning, which would be December 2020. Brad and I combined our households when we moved in together and I moved in to this home with him. There's two bedrooms, so the little bedroom became my yarn room and I moved everything in that I had, the storage that I had from my previous home and everything into the little bedroom here. It didn't make any changes. Then fast forward to when we were expecting Teddy and I was in a extreme nesting mode and it meant I wanted to get my yarn storage sorted because obviously the baby needed my yarn to be spot on obviously and that would have been April or May 2022 we did an Ikea trip and we got some items for the baby but I also tricked out the yarn room with a huge Kallax unit huge then fast forward and as you can see on Saturday we got so much done my big Kallax unit is in place, as is the little one on my desk. We've rearranged entirely because before the desk was that away. And I had like a big unit here and a yarn tower in tubs. And my mirror was there. And I've gone with this setup so that when you walk through the door, beautiful Kallax. And it's going to look even better once I've finished this last little bit. That brings us to this year, May 2024. I went on a break with HTDC and I wasn't sure if I was gonna be continuing with my business. And at that time, I also knew that I wanted to say goodbye to the yarn room. I had this beautiful setup. I had all these Kallax Unix stuff full of yarn and all of the bits and bobs and pattern ideas and I had a desk and I had an area all for myself and I had a door that I could shut at one point that room didn't have a door on it <laughs> but there was a door on it that could shut and like I was living the dream right of having this designated yarn space only it wasn't working for us as a family and it just wasn't working for me one of my biggest realizations was that I was trying to continue HDDC as if my life hadn't changed. And my life's so massively different now that it just wasn't, it makes no sense to try and make it the same because it is different. The room was a dumping ground more often than not. If I needed something, I would run up there, grab it and then come back down and I would try and be gone no more than like 30 seconds because it meant I would leave Teddy on his own to go get it. Or I would go up there and take him with me, but it wasn't necessarily a Teddy safe room, whereas the rest of our home has been set up so that it's Teddy friendly and if he can reach it, he can play with it. But that wasn't the case for the yarn room and it was just a dump. I was spending a lot of my work time tidying it up, which wasn't ideal. It either needed a massive overhaul or it just needed to be done with. And, and as drastic as that sounds, that is exactly what was needed. And that is what we have done. Back in May, when I went on a break, I did the first wave of decluttering so to speak
and the reason I did that was because this unit that was originally under my desk was coming down here to be our TV unit. The cables there are for our TV and then the desk I wanted to get rid of, I knew that without a doubt because as I said I was still treating HDDC as if it was the same business owned by the same person that didn't have a child and could give all of the hours like that's not me right now that is not me it never will be me probably i am a stay-at-home mum to a two-year-old child 27 months if you want to do it in months he's with me almost 24 7 i have about five hours a week where I work on HDDC. My days of sitting down at a desk for the whole day or even for like hours on end are done. Like that, that isn't me anymore. I don't do corporate and I don't do the nine to five. And I wanted a space that was accessible that just fit in with our family and our lifestyle so that if I wanted to work on a project, I could just grab the yarn without creating an absolute mess. And I wanted it to be I was going to say integral, but very much a part of our day to day life and for there to be space for it rather than needing its own set space. I also felt like with it taking up a whole room that it was just excessive. It was just excessive. When I first moved into that room, the plan was that we would put a shed in the garden so that I would have like a HQ HGDC HQ in the garden. Again, that plan doesn't really work for us right now because if I'm gonna be out there, Teddy's gonna be out there. So it just makes sense for the space to be where we spend most of our day. And that is downstairs in our home. So welcome to my new yarn room. It is our lounge. I had 16 cube Kallax plus this one stuffed full of yarn, books, everything so much stuff stuff that i needed to organize stuff i needed to get rid of just a lot the more time that i've spent on the break from may up until june july the more i knew that was just wasn't gonna work for us it needs to be downstairs that this is where my yarn needs to be i record in the lounge everything like my projects that i'm working on i keep in the lounge it just makes sense the only thing that didn't quite make sense was the space that I now have to occupy as my yarn room is so much smaller than having an entire room. And so I needed to drastically shrink what I'd already felt like I had quite drastically shrunk. <laughs> um, so I had 12 cubes full of yarn and now I'm going to have the eight behind me, which probably doesn't sound like a huge reduction but it has been a massive massive reduction for me okay let's talk about the space that i now have and i'll show you around it and then we'll talk about what i have and haven't got rid of and then the final bit we need to do is make my yarn fit in this unit behind me and just tidy up the random junk that has appeared on top and if we have chance before Teddy and Brad return, I also have my sewing supplies that are going to live in the lift up part of our sofa. There is nothing else in there. So that's where we've decided it's going to go. New storage. I have the six, the eight cube Kallax behind me, which I feel like is quite full circle. It came out of the yarn room and it is now going to be my yarn room. And this is going to house all of my yarn I did have it set up last week or the week before and I hit a big snag and we'll come back to that. Then I have the storage under the stairs. Most of that is for household items and then I have the corner and a couple of bookcases that are for HDDC and that is mainly going to hold I don't, I don't even know what to call it, just the bits and bobs. So anything that isn't my yarn, isn't my books that I want to keep is going in there. So it 
will mainly be my works in progress and um hang on at this point it's mainly my works in progress my scrap yarn and things like buttons and hardware for bags and um bits and bobs like that basically there's also a couple of boxes stacked up that have a lot of my jewelry making supplies and I might maybe create like I might in the future it is possible that I will sell a lot of that I'm thinking of just creating bundles of the beads and whatnot and just selling them on my vintage or wherever but right now I'm keeping hold of them because I have ideas of merging crochet and beads uh, I'm just not quite ready to say goodbye to that hobby. I have quite often said that I would like another hobby that isn't crochet because crochet is my business. Hence why I'm also keeping all of my sewing supplies because I would like to do more sewing. Things that have gone. I have gotten rid of around half of my yarn stash and this has been a long long process over the course of the year it's been do a little bit here a little bit there mainly because I just don't have huge chunks of time to do these sorts of things anymore and the other reason being is because it's it puts the whole house into disarray and that's tough and that is one thing I have really had to lean into in the last couple of weeks because we have ramped up on the reorganizing that's been going on I'm not sure on your living circumstances and how much they might differ to ours so let me share our circumstances and our choices so that it makes sense as I said I moved into this home with Brad and it was always going to be temporary short term and the plan was that we would stay for a while and then we'd go and get somewhere together that would be our home and more suited to a family home probably much bigger with more bedrooms and a driveway and this that the other and everything else on our wish list more like our forever home then whilst I was pregnant our income massively changed and our priorities shifted quite a lot or maybe it's just that it made our priorities a lot more crystal clear then Teddy arrived thank God safe happy healthy and we made the decision that he wouldn't be going into childcare so then our income massively shifted all over again because we'd gone from I will be returning to work at some point and we will have more money coming in at some point to I'm a stay at home mum, we are a one income family and whatever HDDC makes is a bonus. We do not rely on it and it doesn't produce regular reliable income at this point either, especially having had five months off for this year. But I'm working on that and we will come to that in other videos. Because we have decided we're gonna just have the one income we have been looking at moving we've looked at downsizing we've looked at getting a bigger home we have looked at so many different options like our alternative living and right now we know that where we are is the best place for us and that is here in this home it doesn't mean that we'll be here forever but certainly will be for at least five years if not more it truly depends on different factors changing in the future and that means that we need this home to work for us right now. So everything that is frustrating or annoying, we need to resolve as best as we can so that living here is more of a haven rather than chaos, absolute chaos. <laughs> we are living in a small home. It is a two bedroom home. Um, I think I'll have to try and find out what the square footage is. It is, it is small. And we've had all sorts of comments on the size of our home. Interestingly enough, when we find our forever home, it won't be much bigger than this. There are just 
some layout differences that we would choose and location differences that we would choose. We are pretty committed to staying small forevermore for a whole host of reasons. In a nutshell, small living means that we need less belongings, which means we spend less time tidying it up, which means less maintenance, less money spent, and it frees us up to do the things we want to do, which is family time, adventures, exploring, and it is also, for me, crochet time. I would every time I will choose crochet over cleaning and so we've been on this massive declutter and reorganizing in the last couple of months the last year definitely but the last couple of months it has really kicked in because we've both seen the benefits of having less toys to pick up and less clothes to clean and less to put away it means that once Teddy's asleep, we both have a bit of time to do what it is that we want to do rather than Teddy's asleep and we still need to take care of our home. With those decisions made, we knew we needed to really tackle the yarn room. In order to tackle the yarn room, we had to destroy a couple of areas in our home and we knew that the mess was going to get insane and when you're living in it, that's really tough. So... Because the cupboard under the stairs was gonna be part of my HDDC storage, we had to rip out everything from under there, rearrange it all, and then get rid of the excess stuff. For a while, I had been trying to sell the excess stuff and keep the excess stuff sort of organized and contained, and it just wasn't working. So we took out everything that wasn't supposed to live in there, and we did this two days before Teddy got poorly, and most of that stuff then remained in piles within this room, within the front, in front of the front door and all up the stairs, and then in what was the yarn room, which is now our little room. We also needed to gut the closet. This one could have waited, but we decided in for a penny, in for a pound. So we rearranged the closet and we got some of those hanging divider things, organizer things and some baskets. We set up Teddy and Montessori wardrobe style thing. And I set up um, Brad and I swap sides on the closet. It just works so much better. And now we just need to put a mirror and some shelving in there so that I can put my handmade stuff on the shelving. So although we haven't put the shelving up, everything that's gonna go on them shelves is in a designated area to go on them when we get round to doing that bit, which then meant it could all come out of the yarn room. And then obviously the little, the yarn room needed to be destroyed so it was no longer the yarn room. And that meant that we needed to clear off the callots, take photos, get it sold. And then everything that we cleared off, I had tried to do it in such a way that we would... <laughs> My initial plan was to clear everything off, find the home for that item that comes off and then get rid of the calyx and then the room would be empty. However, it wasn't really working that way because the calyx was there. I still had space to just leave stuff and we decided to list the calyx and it went yesterday or the day before. And also we have two chest of drawers that have come out of our big bedroom. One went yesterday and one is going today. So, the whole house is higgledy piggledy. There's mess everywhere. Everything that came out from under the stairs that is no longer going to live in there is up in the little room. Everything that came out of the closet that is no longer going to live in there is in the little room. Um, there's a whole oh yeah, and then everything in the yarn room that came off the calyx that needs a home is in the little room. So there's just stuff everywhere, everywhere. including the steam map. I did put all of my yarn on this Calax unit and I was quite pleased with it. I had um, six tubs of yarn and two cubbies for books. And then I noticed one evening when I was sat here that the Calax was actually being pushed apart. And because I had rammed so much yarn in and then because the books were on the bottom in the middle, it was pulling it apart. We have this unit we've put it on legs 
So it was either take the legs off, which I didn't want to do because it makes it look fancy, or redistribute the weight. So all of my books are now up in our bedroom. That is the only space in the home for a bookshelf for me or a bookcase for me. So they are in an area where we want to put a bookcase. I just haven't figured out what that bookcase is going to look like yet. So obviously I haven't gone and got it. I'm okay with them being upstairs because I don't reach for them very often, but I wouldn't get rid of them because they are like full of knowledge and just beautiful to look through. And I've been collecting them for so long. So we now need to, having this unit has been fixed, Brad put it back together properly. We need to redistribute my yarn into here. The overflow is going into the sofa, as is my sewing stuff. And then another day, with a little bit of time from another day, we are going to tackle the little room. I don't know. I don't know. At this point, I could probably throw most of it away and not even realise what was in there. So we're not going to do that, but we are going to get rid of a lot of it. And we'll do that another day. Let's get this yarn done. I had in the top four, double knit. I had like the blues and the greens and the browns. And then I had the pinks, the yellows and the red. And then I had Aran weight yarn, Aran weight yarn. And then in here is all of my cotton and my four ply is in here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have along the top all of my double knit yarn. I'm gonna have the pinks, the blues and the yellows. Though I'm going to need to take some out because that cube is stuffed. And then I'm going to have the blues and the greens. And then I'm going to have the neutrals. And then which are currently partly in the pink. So all of my creams, whites, anything you can class as neutral. And the black is all going to go in there. And then in this one I'm going to have... It might be that I put my scrap yarn in there because that is double knit and I do reach for it a lot for granny squares. So it makes sense to have that there. Um, and then I'm going to keep the cotton in there. And in the two behind me, I'm going to have my Aran weight yarn. Just hoping I've got enough cubes left. And then that's going to stay in there. And the Aran weight yarn, the tubs were overstuffed, so there are a few bits that were in project bags and they're going to go in the sofa. I'm going to get all of the yarn out because I put the cubes back in there and then we shall get to business organising. Okay. This is a bag full of bags. It's all my project bags and random things. Blues, greys, browns, pinks, yellows, cream, Aran weight, oh yeah, Aran weight and some chunky. Work in progress. Not for long, I want to get that finished. Works in progress. Scrap yarn. So my works in progress are going to just live under the stairs. I'll show you that in a bit. My plans are to put these big ones in the stairs because they're in their own, in the stairs, in the sofa. Hmm. This one is a miscellaneous tub. It's got some Aran weight, some chunky and like novelty yarns. Um, I have some plans for some of this yarn, but not all of it. And this, I have some crazy ideas.
I should really clean that. How is it so dirty? I only just cleaned it. This one is gonna be for my neutral yarn. So it's already got a bag of this double knit in there. And I'm gonna add in all the rest that I can find, of which there is quite a bit. This tub is my problem tub. <laughs> it's a nice problem to have though. These are my most reached for colours. It's the pinks and the purples and the yellows, like the warmer tones. So I'm going to try and take out some of the neutral to give it a bit more space. This is a very, very pale pink. So it's gonna be staying with this lot. Okay. It's created some room, but still not enough. I could then have a whole cubby full of pink and that would, I think that makes sense. A whole cubby of pink. However, I don't have a spare, I don't have a spare cube right now. I found the cube, it was buried. I'm gonna put all of the pink in this tub. Do I go, I'll say that's pink, it's fine. I need to grab my scissors, I know. Sort this yarn bath out that's happened. Ah, oh, how balls falling apart. Pinks. Wow. Neutrals. Pinks. Warm tones, cool tones. Right team, we're making progress. Last thing to sort out is the scrap. And it will fit as long as I take out some of the bigger abandoned projects. This is crazy, absolutely crazy. Red yarn. Right, this needs to fit. Right now, it's too crazy. Let's try to put it better. Oh, God, go. Come on, go. Come on, go. Come on, go. 
I've resisted, but I need to. I've just been through the scrap and try to pull out anything relatively sizable and put it in its relevant part. A lot of these smaller balls I took out because they were getting lost in the tubs and making the tubs quite messy. And I've taken out some of the more sizable whips like this or abandoned objects really so that I can get those ripped down as well. One of my plans is to focus on this tub and get it organised so that it's actually balls of yarn rather than just yarn bath and then turn a lot of it into granny squares. Speaking of which, I found a couple of granny squares in here as well. I've got that to a point where I can put that in and it not cause too much damage. And that lot there is going in the sofa. We have got chunky pink yarn that I do not know what to do with. The hoover, that's not going in the sofa. Um, I've got this bag of Aran mix and chunky mix. I have some projects in mind for it, but I haven't really gotten there. This one, I've started so many times and just can't commit to a project on it. Got a load of Aran yarn. Again, I started so many things, can't quite commit. Same with this one. I know that I want some Aran jumpers, but I get part way through and I just get so bored. And I wish I wasn't like that because I would have so many amazing, like, I must have started four or five different ones. I'll complete the back panel and then I'm just so over it. Oh, right. There's less room in this than I remembered, anticipated. We have got the printer, sewing machine, some wadding and old curtains. And we're going to try and fit yarn in here. Aaron, that's potentially going to become a some sort of cardigan for me or a jumper for me this is going to become a cardigan for me there's enough in there to make maybe something like a jumper there's a couple of different bits in there I'm not entirely sure what they're going to become obviously and then I've got this chunky pink I just don't know what to meet with it. There's enough there to make a jumper dress. It's just that it's not a colour that I actually wear. I don't want to let it go. I want to use it. So that's the yarn storage situation in here. Let me show you what we've got going on. neutrals and i have put that in there we've got all the neutrals and um, blacks whites neutral no it doesn't even have the black it has the white and the neutral and i've put carter's blanket in there i want to just get that finished like tonight if possible that all goes in there i have an entire tub of pink yarn took that out of the scrap bit because I don't have much of that in circulation so I can use that for squares 
Then I have orange, yellows, reds, all the warm tones and some purple. And then I have the cool tones, the green, the greens, the greys, the blues and some darker browns in there. This is all of my cotton yarn, which is crazy because I don't even use cotton yarn. Then this is my scraps that is even crazier, that is high on my priority list to sort. And um, we've got some novelty yarns and some Aran in there. And I'm going to put this bag of Aran in with it. And then in here I have four ply and then I have black, which could go in the neutral one once I take Carter's blanket out. So that is all of my yarn stash other than the little bit in the sofa that I've shown you. I'm pretty proud of that. I just have all these bits to make disappear. Again, apologies for the darkness. We don't have lights under here yet. It's on my to-do list. This is our cupboard under the stairs. Welcome. I have given me this half. Let me back up. Can you see? There's literally a cupboard in our lounge that has a slanty door and then you go in and we've put these We've stacked up bookcases to create this organisation thing. We hang up our bags and our coats here. And then we've got all this shoe storage, and bits and bobs. And don't look at that, that's disgusting. And all of these things, Teddy's nappies and the carrier are just stuff. But it looks organised, right? I think so. And then this is the HDDC bit. I've got this corner and i've got this now because it's a slanty roof we have got two works in progress that i do not want to abandon one's crochet one's knitting this is where my granny square stash is currently living i've got the centers and i've got all the granny squares and then i've actually got in there some four ply yarn that needs to go in the yarn that will go in the wicker cube once i've moved carter's blanket and then this is a whip but it's probably going to become an abandoned ufo it's a iconic bag i don't know whether to just finish it because it's so close should i finish it should i finish it let me know i've got rose gold hardware to go with it as well the thing that's put me off is I just don't think I'll reach for the colours. The colours, But I did ask in my tester group and they were like, why don't you do it as like a giveaway or a donation or something? So I could do that. Then I've got some whips there. I've got things you haven't seen, things that you would love to see, things that I've shown you that I've not got back to, things I really, 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 really need to finish. And then those three tubs, those two are my jewellery making tubs and that tub, I got the idea to cover the box in crochet and it also has photos in it at the moment. And then I have that space there that I could put something in. Maybe I should get a cart that I can wheel in and out and then I can keep all of my whips on that. That is something that I am seriously considering doing because then I could just wheel it out and then I can wheel it over to the sofa and do my making. Okay team, my time is up. Brad and Teddy are home. That is my... I get like 90 minutes twice a week. And this is what I've done in this 90 minutes. I have gotten all of this yarn sorted out, cleared off all the junk and yeah, I'm happy with that progress. I like the idea of having the wheelie cart. I'm, I'm trying to not rush out and just buy things. I'm going to use the space and see what will really help. I'm thinking a wheelie car in black would really, would really work because then I could put all of my projects in there, my works in progress in there, and I could just pull it out when I want them. And that would be a good way to use that space. But we shall see. Everything's been put away. Everything is tidy and all the stuff that was on top it's gone up in the little room the little room is 
an absolute room of doom. Not looking forward to tackling that, but we shall do it 90 minutes at a time. I hope that you enjoyed today's vlog and let me know what you think to my new yarn storage and how much I have downsized. What about you? Have you ever downsized your space by choice? Or would you prefer a bigger space? Do you think it's balmy to give up the yarn room? I didn't need to give it up. We could leave it as a yarn room for many, many more years to come. But it just wasn't working for me. So yeah, thank you for watching. Thank you for spending time with me and my yarn. And I'll see you soon.